All right, let's move on to receivers, shall we? Um, actual receivers that are not eligible for running back. First up, we have Rashard Higgins, Cleveland at New York Giants, or Jets, excuse me, rather, uh, rostered in 16.3% of leagues. He has really been viable um, since, for a while. since OBJ went down. Um, yeah. He had almost, I mean, nine and a half fantasy points this week and half PPR scoring. Four catches for 76 yards on five targets. I mean, look, the Giants have a good defense, a really good defense. Uh, the two weeks before that, he had 19 targets and combined for 160 yards plus 170 yards in the previous two games. Um, had another yeah, I mean, He's, he's I mean, basically had the same exact line for three straight weeks and two of the weeks he scored a touchdown and the last week he didn't. So that's why it was only nine and a half points. Yeah, and then you, you know, build in the fact that they're going up against the Jets this week who are giving up the fourth most fantasy points to receivers over the last month at 44. Yeah. I mean, it's appealing. I would, he shouldn't be on the waiver wire, if I'm being completely honest. Like, he should have been added. It's criminal that he's only rostered in 16% of leagues. He should be added and played. Yeah, yeah uh, I was surprised it wasn't around 50%. I mean, consider at least considering high who, 30s, low 40s. Could, yeah, considering who is at 50%. Um, but yeah, Richard Higgins uh, has been very good. You should add him. You can play him. Um, not even if you're in a tough spot. I think you should consider playing him. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I'd... <laughs> I don't know if I'd have the guts to start him over Robert Woods or, or Cooper Cup uh, against Seattle, but I think you would have to at least consider it um, just because of a matchup consistency and and what he's done in the past. Um, I, I think you could look at starting Rashard Higgins over both of them, honestly. Rashard Higgins or Russell Gage? That is a great question. It obviously depends on if Julio plays. Assuming um, Julio sits. Um, I would probably start Richard Higgins. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Um, better matchup than at yep. KC for Russell Gage, Richard Higgins, or who's somebody that's like fringe being played. Michael Gallup's looked good a couple weeks in a row. Would you throw in Michael Gallup here? No, I, I would take Higgins over him too. Uh, Richard just, Higgins just, or just Tyler because Boyd. Of comp- yeah, competition for targets. Um, I would play Higgins because you don't know what Cincinnati's offense is going to look like. Boyd has obviously fallen off a cliff. Um, tonight, literally, he's had zero catches as we're recording this. I know he got dinged up a little bit on a hit early. Um, but, I mean, you can't start a single Cincinnati wide receiver going forward. Richard Higgins or Kiki QT? I would go QT. Okay. Interesting. Probably. Pro- probably. Uh, well, I, I don't know. We're, we're, we're going to talk about um, my guy, Chad Hansen here in a couple minutes, but if, if cooks plays and you have Hansen, um, I, I would like to amend that. And I would, I would start Higgins just because the matchup's too good to not. There are not uh, out of like the, the flex quality receivers. There are very few. I think that I would start over Richard Higgins. Uh, I think he is a high, high end flex play for me. I agree. Um, I agree. All right. Uh, we talked about, do, do you want to dive in a little bit on Greg Ward? Philly at Dallas rostered in only a whopping 5% of leagues. Um, Greg Ward has been extremely viable. Uh, 15 and a half fantasy points this week. Um, Two touchdowns, Third, four yeah. for 15, two scores, five targets. I mean, it looks like him and Jalen Hurts have a little bit of something working. Yeah, right. So I'm assuming they were playing practice squad uh, offense a little bit against uh, the Philly uh, defense. Um, it, it seems like him and Greg Ward have have something. Um, only five targets. No more, no less. Each of the last three games. Um, a lot of the Green Bay stuff was in garbage time. So I I wouldn't I don't think you can you touch can't it. Be, I guess maybe you you, can, you can't you just can't do it. No, you're not not in the championship. You're not going to make it to the championship if you're starting Greg Ward. So 
Yeah, you're still looking for options though. Potentially, yeah. like you never want to stop looking. I, I would, I, w- I would take Russell Gage over him. Same. Um, I, I would take um, Higgins over him, obviously. Um, so he's he's at least third on the depth chart here. Yeah. Let's move to our next guy. You brought him up already. We've already talked about him a little bit. Russell Gage at Kansas City, rostered in 21% of leagues. Double-digit points in each of the last three games. Uh, 25 targets combined over the last three games. Touchdowns in two out of three. The guy has been on a tear, and he's honestly been matchup proof, if you want to call it that. Um, (laughs) Yes, Tampa and the Chargers suck. Um, against receivers on defense, but New Orleans was not a slouch, is not a slouch, and he had eight targets and turned it into a four for 50 uh, line with a touchdown to finish with 13 points. At Kansas City, which, yet, I mean, not awful, not great. They're ninth. Not great. They were yeah. ninth best against uh, receivers going into this week only averaging 30 and a half fantasy points to receivers. But I mean, there's going to have to be some points scored in this game, right? You like gauge yeah, at all? to, to, to Calvin Ridley. Um, it, it, again, we're only talking about Russell gauge. If Julio doesn't play, if Russell gauge, um, if Julio plays, is, then you're is, out. yeah, if, if he's, if he's truly the number two, then yeah, you can start him. Um, if Julio plays, you, you don't play Russell gauge. Um, I think you pick up Russell Gage only if Julio does not play um, or that's the reason why you should pick him up, assuming he's not going to play. Um, Atlanta is out of it for the season. Um, it's not a great matchup, but, you know, more so than Greg Ward is the targets are there. Eight, seven, ten over the last three games, uh, touchdown in two of the last three um, double digit fantasy points in all three games. So, yeah, I think um, I, I think. He is the number two guy that you should be picking up this week uh, behind Richard. I want to say I agree with that. I'm just a lot more leery on the Kansas City Chiefs matchup. I think that his best chance to score is yeah. maybe in garbage time in the fourth quarter. I yeah. don't particularly see this game being very close. Um, but but with the, with Kansas City being so good against wide receivers... That generally means they're taking out the number one wide receiver. So if they're shading everything over to Ridley and you have the honey badger kind of, you know, playing safety over the top against him, um, you know, maybe that does open it up for, for gauge at least slightly. The volume Ridley, would be there, right? Right. Where, where Ridley's clearly the number one uh, Atlanta does not have any sort of semblance of a running game at this point where they're just going to throw the ball a ton. And so no, that, that, the guy. <laughs> Ito or Hill or Gert, like it's just they, they got they literally have no running game. So um, the the targets will for sure be there. Um, it doesn't matter when you get them, as long as you get them, and and he will. Next up, we have Zach Pascal, uh, Indiana at Pittsburgh this week. Zach Pascal rostered in a whopping one percent of leagues. Um, oh. Had a monstrous week this week, 22 fantasy points, uh, turned six targets into five for 80 yards and two scores. I mean, it's a one week wonder. You can't play him at Pittsburgh. Don't, don't do it. We're bringing him to your attention. Yeah. 22 points. Um, let somebody else have him. He'll put up two points. Um, and you can move on. He's clearly the wide receiver three there behind Pittman and T Y. So who cares? Let him go. Um, probably my number two pickup of the week behind Richard Higgins is Chad Hansen of Houston. Uh, I'm calling him the Hansen one or the handsome one, or I don't know. Mbop like Mbop delicious. <laughs> did you ever listen to Hansen back in the day? Were you a big Hansen I did. fan? Yep. Our, uh, Mr. Dalkey, our bus driver on the way from our middle school to grade school to pick up our our grade school teacher, he let us sing um, karaoke into the um, overhead bus. Um, oh, this is fantastic. Microphone. This and is like so, what dreams are made of. Yeah, the two songs that were generally sung uh, between the, 
the schools were Umbop by Hanson and Roller Coaster of Love, I think, were the were the two that I remember. <laughs> Roller Coaster. Um, <laughs> oh, that's oh, like flu, the most flu, flu. That's the um, most middle American story I've ever heard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um bop. Beep a dop fondue wop. Um, yeah, so Ch- Chad Hansen, um, he's been good. Um, kind of taking over that number two role since since Fuller went down. Literally did not have a fancy point until after Fuller got suspended um, due to taking some drugs. So, um, yeah, I mean, basically I had double digits um, every week. Last week was his low was his low output from a target perspective. Um, but Cincinnati seems like it was a good matchup, although Pittsburgh didn't do much against them this week. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I get, if you want to roll with him, uh, I, would, I prefer gauge, um, over him for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like him a lot. It's just the matchup I think makes me a little concerned, uh, since he giving up the second fewest fantasy points to receivers and only 24 a week, um, which is obviously concerning. I think he's a desperation play. Uh, you mentioned his targets went down. He only had three targets against Indy. Granted, it's an Indianapolis defense that is very good. Uh, turned it into two catches for 55 and a score. Had seven targets in each of the two previous games, including right. the first game against Indy, which he had five catches for uh, just over 100 yards. Um, desperation play. Uh, you got it. I mean, the volume is going to be there. They're going to have to pass. Deshaun's going to have to move the ball. So the volume, I mean, he should at least have what, five targets, I would guess. So I would think so. And they don't have a running game, so I get it. Yep. Next up, we, we have, uh, I think, a couple deeper desperation heaves. Yeah, um, these are these are quick ones again at the end here, right? Yeah, I, I would agree. The first up, we have Tyron Johnson. Um, obviously, the receivers in L.A. are not healthy. Uh, Keenan Allen, um, particularly, um, Tyron Johnson has 12 targets in the last two games combined. Yeah, also has touchdowns in back-to-back games, finishing double digits, obviously, with, because of those touchdowns in each of the last two games. Has yeah, he's their de- deep threat, too, where, you know, he might catch a bomb. Um, so he's there. I, I don't think he's... I You can't start him. No, I mean, uh, the Broncos are seventh against receivers, so... That would be quite the desperation heave uh, of Tyron Johnson. Um, Do you like Kendrick Bourne more? Kendrick Bourne at Arizona rostered in 2% of leagues. These are a couple 2% guys. Um, I like 2% just for the record. This week against, or um, excuse me, week 15 against Dallas, four targets, four catches, 86 yards and a score, 16 and a half fantasy points. Do you think he's startable at all against Arizona? Nope. Uh, 49 of those were on a last second Hail Mary. Um, that includes the touchdown. So he what got a 12 point play uh, to end the game. Um, so he only had 16 for the week. Um, I'm assuming Debo is not coming back. So if you're super desperate, sure. You're fine. Keep going. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, K- Kendrick Bourne, fine. I, I wouldn't wouldn't bank on him at all. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you. Now, our last couple desperation heaves that we have here: Des Bryant, Lil Jordan Humphrey, and Larry <laughs> Fitzgerald. Uh, Des Bryant did get into the end zone this past week. You can't play him against the Giants. I can't believe that we even Ross mentioned him. I can't Throw believe the he's X man. I can't believe I'm he's not. rostered in four percent of leagues. Um, Larry Fitzgerald is like the carcass is carcass is carcass of Larry Fitzgerald we, at this we point. We have a board. We have a board bet between who scores more fantasy points of Larry Fitzgerald and Alan Lazard. Uh, Fitzgerald is like five points behind Lazard in the season. So I have a chance. I don't care the fact that he was out for six weeks. Uh, I'm counting it. There's no way. I mean, Lazard is wide receiver 71. Fitzgerald is in the 90s. That's only five points. Yeah, he had a touchdown. He had a touchdown. The the rankings don't uh, update until tomorrow. It's by total points still on ESPN. So that, that will not update before the end of the week. 
And then my guy, I just wanted to highlight here. Hold on. I, I have a little, um, little prop here for the, for the end of the segment, uh, with, with little Jordan Humphrey. Um, here's my daughter's high chair. And so I, I literally was so excited um, to find out that somebody's name was Little Jordan Humphrey, um, where I don't know if he fits in this high chair or not, but his freaking name is Little Jordan. I couldn't not I could not not put him on the list. Lil Jordan. That's awesome. I love him. I want him to be a fantastic wide receiver. He caught a touchdown this week. And I hope he catches three this week. Will Jordan. We're wasting the people's time. Uh, he had four targets, two catches for yes. 29 yards and a score. Will Ad Jordan. Mini. Yes, I understand it's Minnesota. You're not starting Lil Jordan Humphrey at Minnesota. <laughs> you're, no, you're, you're not. There's no way in hell. But um, I would love if he caught a touchdown again this week. I would love it. Baby MJ. All right. Uh, tight end ads. There's a couple out there that are around 50% ownership. Um, I mean, the one that you have to add everywhere is Logan Thomas of the Washington football team, right? Um, rostered in 53% of leagues, scored 16 and a half fantasy points this week. I was worried about Dwayne Haskins. I should not have been. Uh, he had 15 targets, 13 catches, 100 yards against Seattle, up against Carolina this week. I mean, you got to be liking that. Uh, the Panthers are 27th against the tight end position, giving up 17 points per game to tight ends. So he's the only be, guy. He, he's the guy. Good. Yeah, he's. He, we, we've mentioned him in the past. He's clearly the guy. Um, wash, uh, you know, tight end so thin. If he's available, he might be the priority waiver out of the week if you're hurting a tight end. If he's going to have that many targets, that many catches, and Haskins is just going to check down the whole game, then yeah, it's Logan Thomas, no doubt. Uh, other guys that are right around 50% are Tyler Higby and Austin Hooper. Do you have a preference out of them at all? I would say Hooper. If I would definitely head. prefer Hooper. I cannot start a, a Rams player against Seattle. Um, just, just can't do it. I, I'd much rather take Hooper. All right. And uh, do you think Cole Komet is viable even after the Cole Komet letdown? Yeah, I feel like he got talked up a little bit right this week. Um, where, you know, what, what are we going to do with Cole Komet? Um, and then he kind of didn't do anything, uh, against a somewhat vulnerable Minneapolis, um, you know, defense, but he played 100% of snaps. Yeah. So literally one, that's crazy for a tight end to be in on 100% of plays. Um, and so just looking at that going forward, you know, yeah, desperation play week 16, but I kind of like his chances next year as definitely being a top 15 tight end. Um, the only thing, the only other person that's out there is good old George Kittle. Um, Kittle is rostered in 74% of leagues, which means in 26% of leagues, he needs to be added. He is lobbying to play in week 16. If he plays, you have to start him, right? Am I, I'm not imagining that. Am I like you have to start, you have to start Kittle if he plays. You're going to start a tight end 20 in your last. Yeah, of course you're starting Kittle if he plays. Um, he has tight end one upside, um, even though, even though it's still going to be Kelsey or, or Waller. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I yeah, Kittle's a, a top five tight end um, if he plays. So pick him up if he's available. Um, he's a freaking man. There you go. Uh, 